everybody. Welcome to the show. This is me. We're going to have a great webinar today for you talking about agency stuff. Uh, this is uh, my name is Pep Laya. I'm the founder of CXL, Conversion Excel. Um, and we have Alex here for some reason. Alex, would you please leave? And Maddie, uh, I don't know why she's here. Remove. Okay. Awesome. Uh, let's let's give it a couple more minutes uh, to before we get going. So let's make sure everything works. So you guys see, there's a chat feature here. Let's try it out. So send me a message on this chat. Uh, right here say hello ask me a question that you want me to cover um, stuff like that cool seems to be working so yeah I love this shirt this is this is a reminder for myself uh, this is a reminder for myself that I shouldn't like my ideas I should focus on solving the problem uh, okay so the way we're gonna do this guys is that I'm gonna rant for like 40 minutes, maybe 30, I don't know. Uh, and then I'm, we're just gonna do Q&A. So for a maximum of 60 minutes, uh, I'm not sure how long I'll take to run through my uh, key lessons learned because I mean, I think I have prepared eight. So false advertising, it was supposed to be five, but actually had more stuff that I, I thought was important to share. All right. So before we get into it, uh, who here is not a CRO agency person? Uh, tell me in chat and tell me why you're here if you don't run a CRO agency or offer a CRO service. I'm just curious. You can stay, I'm not kicking you out. Um, just, just tell me, I wanna understand why you're here and what, you, what you're looking to get out of this webinar. Nobody? Or you're all just chicken shit? Starting creative services company, all right. Awesome, Joshua. Starting an agency. Como esta, Pedro? More signups for what? Um, this is not a Legion webinar here. Um, membership site. So, Josh, you're in the wrong place because we're, we're talking agency stuff here. Uh, uh huh. Cool. So, guys, when you use chat, do not send to all panelists. Send to everyone. Otherwise, other people can't see it and they think I'm just rambling here, being uh, crazy and stuff. So, send all chat to everyone, not panelists. Um, yeah, Carly says I didn't see messages sent to panelists as me. So, Carly, fix that mistake. Send to everyone. So, cool. Do not use the Q and A feature. Uh, use only the live chat feature and send to everybody. So down the line, I'm going to take questions. Every question that is addressed to panelists, I will not answer. I will only answer questions sent to everyone. All right. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to share my screen now and let's get to it. Uh, during my, um, there is an uh, option to send to everyone, not all. It's called Everyone, Jerry, and uh, most people are using it. Um, uh, so I'm going to get into it. I'm going to take questions after. So let me go through my rant. Uh, it should not be all panelists. It should be everyone. Everyone. There's an option called everyone. So I'll take questions that I address to everyone down the line, or questions sent to just panelists. Uh, I'll only cover if there's time left. All right, cool. I'm excited. Uh, let's let's get to it. I'm going to share my screen here, uh, and here we go. Uh, okay. So, top lessons learned from running a CRO agency. So, I started Conversion Excel CXL 2011. So, six years ago. Six years ago, uh, it's not like a huge long time uh, running a CRO agency, but I have still 
distilled, um, I've extracted many lessons uh, from this journey that I think might be of help to you. So let's just hop right uh, into it. So number one, it is so much easier to run this business, an agency business, if you have a name and if you have an audience, because think about it, you are in the business, if you run a CRO agency or any agency for that matter, you're in the business of expertise. You're in the business of expertise. You are not in the business of selling services. People don't pay you for your time. They pay you for your expertise. They want results. And so if I'm thinking, oh, I, we need to bring in an expert to help me with whatever problem we're having in my company. Who, I do, who do I turn to? Do I turn to this well-known expert in the field or this Mr. Nobody who just cold called me last night? This is a massive difference. It's a massive difference if you have name recognition and if you have an audience who's helped you. Selling CRO cold, meaning that you start emailing people, you start calling people, hey, you know, I'm this guy, you know, want to meet up, let's, let's talk about CRO, we can increase your conversion rate, blah, blah, blah. It's so difficult. It is so difficult to make it in this business uh, by having the cold approach. Have the warm approach. If leads come to you, if leads come to you, fill out a form, lead gen form on your website, say, hey, I want to buy your services. Then the sales call that follows is now about, so who are you that, you know, should I even help you? You know, you're in the position of power. It's a massive difference. You're in the position of power. So otherwise, if you have to sell them the idea that A, A you should do CRO, and B, you should hire me to do CRO for you, it's just it's so much friction in the process. Uh, I'm going to just quickly check the chat that you're sending to make sure. Uh, okay. Loud thump. Okay, no more thumping on the table. Got it. Cool. Optimizing as we go. And build an audience. So how do you build an audience? The audience, of course, number one is uh, blogging. You can run a podcast, uh, YouTube show. Doesn't matter what it is. Snapchat, I don't care, Instagram, if you can pull it off. The exact channel makes less difference. Of course, SEO, uh, for SEO reasons, uh, blogging is the best way to go about it because, you know, people search on Google and then they can find you. But if you're all only in your local market, you can do events, you can do your local uh, meetups, local groups, local, you know, whatever the local thing is that you guys do over there. So it doesn't have to be blogging, but you need to focus on building the audience. Uh, if you only rely on referrals to get business, it's a shitty hard life. I mean, maybe you're amazing and maybe all your clients give you referrals, great. But if, what if there's a moment when referrals are not coming in, because you're not in control when somebody refers you, or where somebody asks people that you know for, hey, do you know somebody who does CRO? So you are not controlling, uh, you are not controlling the inputs or outputs really. So a much better way to do it is in addition to referrals that you will have anyway when running an agency is you have your own email list. So if you have a promotion, if a new product, new offering, you can just email qualified leads and uh, make money. So if I were you, if I were just starting out, I would do everything I can to build myself a name, build an audience. If you don't know where to start building a name for yourself, just post for CXL blog. All right, uh, next uh, results. So, you know, remember, we are in the business, or and you are in the business of expertise. If you run an agency, you're in the business of expertise. And there are no low hanging fruits, no matter, you know, of course, if you read, you know, a bunch of blog posts, it, it, you might think that it's, it's so easy to get results. Oh, just change this and that, and then, you know, make the pictures bigger and button, uh, you know, more orange. No, I mean, it's, it's really hard work. And it's even harder work, it's even harder work when uh, you work with well-optimized websites. It's not that hard to make a shitty website better. It is very hard to make a good website even better. It's hard, hard work. So, 
So uh, to run an optimization, a testing program, there are three metrics to consider. That, that should be your um, um, uh, measures of success. So number one is the number of variants tested. So like your speed of experimentation, very important. Number two is win rate, the percentage of winning tests, or you know it can also be uh, winning experiments that are just, you just change shit and see what happens. And three, up uplift per successful experiment. You know, the speed of implementation, speed of testing, is, is all about your capability of exec execution capability, how easy the client is to work with, and also how good your developers are and how many uh, you have available. But the do two other things, how your win rate and uplift per successful experiment, these only depend on your true expertise your true expertise. And competition is nuts. You think your competition, you're, you know, if, if your competitor, you, you, think, you might think your competitors are not as smart as you are. And maybe that's true, but you have to bear in mind that your, your client might not notice. Your client, they're hearing the same pitch. They're hearing the same pitch from everybody. How do they know? That, that your pitch, you actually can deliver. And if you actually can't deliver, I mean, you'll be fired very soon. So getting results is very hard. And, and competition is intense. And of course, you know, we can look at the competition pyramid as a, as a basically as a pyramid. So the, the, the more you charge, the narrower the pyramid, meaning the less com competitors you have who do it, you charge top fees who like the, the best of the best companies. But, the expertise at those companies goes also up. So in a way, the competition is, is uh, it, I mean, it's never easy. It's never easy. So you need to, of course, uh, in order to win business and in order to win in this business, you need two things. You need to actually have the damn expertise. If you're just winging it, oh, I read a couple of blog posts, I can do it. No, you can't. You will fail miserably. You will generate bad word of mouth. I mean, everybody has bad months. I mean, my agency competes with the best of the agencies out there. And clients change agencies every year, pretty much. Uh, sometimes every, uh, uh, every two years. And so I see what my competition, I see you know, the type of tests they run, the kind of results they've gotten for the clients, and they see what they've done. So everybody has bad months. Everybody has shitty tests. Everybody has poor periods. And we're talking about the best of the best that have sometimes a month and two and three without results. Because when you're working with highly optimized websites, it's difficult. So my advice to you would be to invest intensely and immensely in your expertise and the expertise of your employees. Uh, because uh, um, the competition is going to eat your lunch if you can't deliver. You need to focus on getting those case studies, those referrals. Um, getting results is, is, is damn hard, uh, and to be prepared for it. Another thing to remember here is that you should work with bigger businesses. CRO conversion optimization in itself does not lend well to small businesses, and mainly for the fact that A, you need a bunch of transactions to even be able to run the testing program. So uh, a rough ballpark, I like to say that if you don't have 1,000 transactions a month, and there's a rough ballpark, you can't run a testing program. You can run maybe one test a month, but we can't call it a testing program uh, per se. Another question I asked before taking on a client is that we know that getting results is hard. We know that getting results is hard, so if we are only able to improve your sales, the amount of revenue you make by 1%, how much is that worth to you? So if you're a company that does $1 million in revenue, increase your sales by 1%. How much is that? It's $10,000. So uh, $10,000, uh, and they, let's say that, that that's how much extra money they get, and that's not profit, it's revenue. So who knows what the profit margins are and how many months are they having you as an agency on to do this work and how much do you charge? So there, there, there's no ROI in there. There's no ROI in there for a company that does $1 million a year 
and you improve the sales by 1%. Of course, you, you might get lucky and inc improve it by 5%, 50,000 a year. Still, still not, not, a huge, not a huge thing. Because uh, um, also companies, you know, if you think, ah, oh, but I charge, you know, 200 bucks a month. Well, A, you're an idiot. And B, uh, no company that makes 1 million bucks a year hires a company that charges 200 dollars a month for the services I mean the world does not work that way the bigger the business the more they want to pay for the services so so number one is you want to work with bigger businesses because a 1% is worth more if you work with one of our clients uh, a Marriott hotels uh, online revenue eight billion dollars a year 1% is worth lots of Ferraris lots of Lamborghinis so 1% is amazing. If we do 1% every six months, still amazing. So, and of course, because they get more value out of it, they are more happy with you, more referrals to you, and you can charge more money. Easy as that. So as a, as a ballpark, you should try to not do business with companies that, are, that do less than 10 million a year in revenue. Of course, there are exceptions and blah, blah, blah. It was a rough ballpark. That's that's kind of the magic line. So if, if a company does more than ten million dollars a year on online revenue, it's a great fit for a CRO company. If it does less, it might not be uh, it might not be uh, a good fit. Uh, do you need to to do testing in order to do CRO? No, you you know uh, you can optimize without testing, but then. The accuracy of your work, measurability of your work becomes shoddy. And of course, definitely that means the business is smaller, they can't pay you more money. And agencies don't scale. Agencies don't scale. So meaning that the only way to make more money is by you know having more clients. So if you have clients that pay a thousand bucks a month, uh, my lesson is that one optimizer can work at the same time, maximum with three, four clients three, four clients at a time per optimizer uh, without sacrificing quality. If you work with six, seven, whatever more at a time, the quality goes way down. And remember, getting results is hard. So if you don't have the focus, you don't, you're not getting the results and bad reputation will follow. So, so you do the math. So if you have people in an agency, three, four clients per person per month, how much should the, those clients pay for you to make money? So re realistically, the only way to make more money fast is to charge more money. The only way you can charge more money is by working with bigger clients. That's really it. So do not work with small businesses. There's no money in it. There's, and also there's no fun in it and the results are way harder to get. Small business, mom and pop with you know, uh, 500K uh, revenue, big business, 500 million in revenue. The amount of work that goes into it to get results same. So why, why waste your life working with small businesses? Everything is hard. Everything is equally hard. Uh, so go work with big businesses. So that, how do you get big businesses? Same way you get small businesses, pretty much, with some differences. Of course, you need to know how to pitch them. You need to know how the politics works. You need to know how the silos work. You need to have some big business experience. That will also come over time, and you can learn from other people who've been there and done that. Um, but mainly your messaging and your pricing will need to reflect that on your website. Who, who is it that you work with? A big business comes to your website and you say, oh, we work with everybody, SMBs, mom and pops, startups, and enterprise. Enterprise is like, no, <laughs> that's not going to work. Or if they say, oh, price is starting from a thousand bucks a month. They're like, no, we don't pay such small fees. So it's weird. I know. But I mean, that's why we have enterprise tools, software tools, enterprise and, and uh, SMB software tools. Big businesses don't want cheap tools or cheap services. All right, next. Talked about competition. Uh, differentiation is hard. You know, I hear it all the time and my people hear it all the time. Uh, when we pitch a client, the client says, well, these other guys that you're up against, they have the exact same pitch. Oh, we're data driven. We improve your, you know, ROI. Blah 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 blah. It's, there's no difference. So if there's no difference, why should they hire you? 
right? Of course, you, you can have more case studies and better case studies and you can have better references and all those things help. Uh, you can be cheaper and that also helps. But there's always somebody cheaper than you, so do not make cheap your competitive advantage. Unless you're just getting started, you need to land your first clients to build some case studies. I get it, that's what I did. Um, so, so how do you differentiate yourself? So of, of course results, you need to have results, otherwise there's no pitch. So you need to have something unique about you that other people don't have. So branded methodology is a thing that helps. We have Research Excel conversion research framework. We have PXL test prioritization framework. Our friends slash competitors at Wider Funnel have their PI prioritization, they have their lift model. Uh, infinity something um, and, and so on so like different agencies have their different things and that really works it's a great pitch to have because we're using this own unique thing and nobody else can say that about themselves right so branded methodology helps it lifts you up and it's especially good if you can show how other people in the market have adopted your frameworks because then you're a knowledge leader you're you're a a visionary, if you will, uh, and, and remember, people are hiring you for your expertise. So if you are the guy coming up with the methodologies that the market is using, they hire you. So if you do, you want to hire this guy, or you do, do you want to hire the guy who taught that guy? You know that kind of stuff. Qualify, yes. Yeah. So we talked about big businesses, and you don't want to work with small businesses. Because there's no money in it. Uh, it's not a good fit for C or Bro. So does it mean that uh, small business leads are not coming in? Sure, they are. They are in. And we used to waste so much money. Small businesses uh, filling out our lead forms, giving us uh, a call. And then, you know, after an hour long pitch and explaining how we do things and, you know, showing our case studies, they're like, all right, so my monthly budget is like $400. We're like, dude, my hour on the phone costs more than that. <laughs> so, of course, you, you you can't be an asshole, but that's what I'm thinking because you know I'm me and my other people at my agency are wasting so much money talking to leads that are never going to give us money. It's just a bad fit. So, how do you get uh, get around it? How do you um, eliminate that waste? And, and of course, the easiest way is by improving lead qualification. So you can apply lead scoring models. So lead comes in, you have some sort of a, you use Mad Kudu or some other lead scoring tool or, you know, whatever. If you have a marketing automation tools, they might do those things for you. And so that, that's one. So you need, to, you need to do some lead scoring uh, or you need to just um, weed out bad leads by making your website talk to the ideal customer. We work with companies that do 10 million a year who are in e-commerce. That's what we want, that's the ideal customer. E-commerce companies making at least 10 million a year. You know, uh, also in your uh, magic thing we did to get rid of shitty leads uh, was, um, uh, we we added budget drop downs onto a lead gen form. What's your budget for this stuff? Or and then uh, for, we've been testing it also. Like, uh, what's your annual revenue? And the lowest amount is high enough so that the uh, small leads are uh, self deporting themselves. Basically, they're like, oh, the minimum minimum company size is what, or uh, minimum budget is. Woo, Oh my God, I didn't know that, you know, we're talking 10,000 a month here. So, and they, they just don't fill out the form, they'll go elsewhere. Great success. All right. Of course, even if you qualify leads, even if they have the money, you will get, uh, sorry for thumping my uh, thing here. You will get shitty clients. Uh, clients from hell, you guys see that comic, Clients from Hell, it's, it's highly recommended. Uh, let me quickly see in the chat. Um, okay, uh, nobody complaining about uh, you can't hear me. So I'll, I'll take the questions after. So 
you need to start paying attention to the signs of a client from hell. The client from hell will suck you dry and it's not worth the money. It's not worth your life. You know, like, of course, we all have big goals. We're working towards a goal. Uh, we, we want to get uh, somewhere with our business and on the way, you know, basically it's process. So we, we, we're seeing the, you know, we're chipping away at the dream. We're, we're marching towards our vision. And along the way, it's just daily grind. And the important thing is in order to meet our goals, in order to get there, we need to enjoy the daily grind. We need to enjoy the process. So if you have shitty clients, they're going to kill your joy for life. And it's not worth the money. Nothing is worth it. Uh, I've gotten pretty good at firing clients. Uh, um, and of course, if you're hungry, you need to feed your family, you need the money, you, you, you take what you can get. You know, I've been there, I've done stuff for money, uh, I mean only for money that I didn't enjoy and it's not what you think. Uh, I guess that came out wrong. Anyways, um, yeah, so what, what are some of the signs of a client from hell? Well, first of all is they want to use uh, some real-time chat like Skype or uh, whatever. Uh, they want to sit in the Slack with you. So that's thing like these people are uh, needing too much attention. They need attention all the damn time. And then, then, then if you don't respond in real time, they get mad and you know, it's like all kinds of stuff. So that's why never say yes to any real-time chat. Arrange weekly uh, meetings, uh, whether in person, over the phone, um, hangouts, whatever it is. Uh, but have, it, have structure in place. Second is they are anal retentive about every little detail that goes into the contract. They're anal retentive about every little thing about how you do things and then what happens and then they'll, they'll send you pages and pages of documents to revise. They want to have 17 meetings before they're ready to sign anything. It's a clear sign. It's a client from hell. If you think the closing process was hard, wait until you start doing the work. Oof, they'll suck the life out of you. So now, now my process is that uh, lead comes in and they're like asking too many questions. They like every little detail needs to be like we need to have three meetings about it. I'm like, you know, guys, actually, I, I don't think this is a fit. Or if you're already in it, uh, you just need to say, guys, I don't think this is working out. Uh, I'll give them two options. Uh, either we change the way we work, uh, where uh, you give us more freedom to do our stuff, or uh, we, we, we go separate ways because the way you want to consume this service is not the way we want to provide it and you'll find somebody else. Uh, yeah. All right. Productize. So if you're an agency, the shittiest thing you can do is sell hours. Oh, we build hours. So we did 20 hours of work. So our hour cost, you know, hundred bucks. So that's what we'll build it. No, you are in the business of expertise. Nobody hires you to spend hours. And also, uh, charging billing hourly is a really dick move because somebody more experienced gets stuff done 10 times faster than somebody junior. And your agency has a fixed rate for billable hours. How is that fair to your clients? And if you charge hourly, it is in your interest to do everything as slowly as possible. How is that good for the client? No. Value-based pricing. So value-based pricing. So I talked about work with big businesses. Think about how much is 1% improvement in sales worth to the client. So that's how we charge. Always a flat fee. So we charge a flat monthly retainer. Uh, in our case, the minimum is 10K a month, uh, up to 20K a month or more, depending on the client size. So if 1% improvement in sales means, uh, means a lot of Lamborghinis will charge you 20K or more. If, um, so basically I want to make sure that what, whatever we're doing means five, six, seven uh, times ROI on the, the money that they're spending with us. That's the goal. Um, so, so you need to productize your offering. So you, I highly recommend you, I mean, first of all, no project based stuff because CRO is on a project. It's continuous, continuous work. So you need to set up a retainer for CRO work. 
so figure out a monthly flat rate for your retainer. And of course, you need to figure out what that flat retainer includes. Um, and you can break it into different pieces. So uh, what costs time for you? Upfront conversion research is time. So that's a separate product. We, we sell just conversion research that contains, you know, this kind of qualitative stuff, analytics, blah, 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 blah. It's a product. You can buy it solo. But it's also how we start every retainer. And we charge a separate kickoff fee for just a conversion research product. Research is a product. Now we get to the ongoing testing. And ongoing testing, again, like, do you just tell people what to test? Or do you uh, also design the test code up to test, write the copy for the tests? And I recommend that you do, because if you only thing you do is consulting, give advice, I think you should, you know, do something with your homepage. I think that's the problem over there. Then, I mean, the problem is that people are extremely shitty at execution. I used to be a consultant back in the early 2000s, marketing consultant, where I used to go in and tell people what to do, and I didn't do any of it. I just said, you should do this and that. And then later, people came to me, hey, we did everything you said, um, and results are shit. And I'm like, I went and I took a look, and it's like, this is what you implemented? Oh my God, this is horrible. And that's when I uh, changed. That's when I started the agency, because like, I, I realized people are extremely shitty at execution. So I highly recommend that you, you also, you come up with all the test treatments, copy design, and code them up in the testing tools. Because uh, also, in most companies, design and development resources are scarce. Uh, the IT has a six month backlog of you know, building new features and stuff. So if you come in, tell marketing that, hey, uh, give your marketing budget to us and we'll code all the tests that you need. It's, oh, great, we don't need to wait for the IT anymore. We can just run. It's great. It's a great value proposition. Of course, you need to figure out how many tests per month you offer. Because you can't, I mean, it, it obviously depends on how much traffic and transactions the client has. So you, you are limited by, if it's a low traffic website, you are limited by how many tests are uh, statistically possible to run. But if it's a high traffic website, uh, millions and millions of people. Then, I mean, then the constraint is going to be in your end, and you need to figure out how many tests you can produce, and then you should um, your monthly retainer should should reflect a certain number of tests per month, uh, a test launched per month, and uh, like how many for desktop, how many for mobile, and so on. So that needs to be in there. Also, of course, weekly get together stuff like that, beautiful reports, uh, you, you name it. You can also productize one-time audits. So, you know, conversion research is a type of audit. Uh, he, uh, somebody who has a list of a budget, they want some quick ideas, heuristic feedback can be a product. Analytics audit. We see whether everything that needs to be measured is, uh, is being measured. Data integrity, does the data actually make sense? Um, you know, are we tracking all the things that need to be tracked? All those things, GA audit or whatever testing tool they're using can be a product and you can charge good money for it. Another thing is that, okay, you, you finish the audit, you find one million problems wrong with their uh, Google Analytics, uh, then um, uh, fixing it. Analytics and tag manager implementation, again, can be great. I mean, there's, it's a very underserved market. Uh, you know, people charge 50,000 for e-commerce uh, GA and GTM implementation. Um, all that stuff. So, productize. So everything should be everything. There's a one-time product like an audit or fixing certain problems. Should be a. Uh, this is this is what we do. This is how where it starts, ends, takes thirty days, costs this much, and then retainer charge flat fee. Uh, I often get questions about revenue share. Um, so I typically do not recommend doing revenue share. Two reasons: companies that want you to do revenue share instead of flat fee are companies that don't have the money. No big company will ever take a revenue share because the upside is uh, for you is, is just too huge. Uh, and getting results is hard. So if you don't get the results, you're fucking screwed. Um, um, so a good, uh, and also, I mean, if, if there's success, you're good, you're good at what you do, your tests are winning, 
when it come when the time comes to share the money, it's going to be fights. It's going to be terrible fights. It's like, well, we also contributed to the idea, so we don't think you should get all that much. And you know, we also had a TV ad campaign running at the same time, so we don't we think you know part of the results because of that. So you should didn't you shouldn't get all that stuff. So it ends in a fight. Uh, sometimes it takes more time for lawyers to agree on the language in the contract than the actual optimization project, uh, project itself. Uh, I have seen some successful implementations of uh, a dual uh, pricing model where there's a flat retainer and there's an upside. So if we achieve certain milestones, certain targets, uh, agency gets uh, a bonus sum. So you know, agency is motivated, but if times are hard, you're not screwing yourself up uh, as well. So you, you can still pay your bills. Uh, that can work, but pure revenue share, stay away. Training CRO folks takes a long effing time. Pooey. If you're going to hire people that have never done CRO before, man. I used to have the philosophy that hire for talent, train for skill, because uh, you can get motivated young people uh, at a reasonable uh, fee, cost, salary. But before they're any good, I mean, it's one year minimum so they could actually talk to the client without saying other bullshit. And, uh, and, and two years to actually become decent at it. It takes a really fucking long time. And why is it? And um, of course, it's, it's because optimizers need to know a lot about a lot. You need to know design and UX. You need to know copywriting. You need to know analytics, statistics, testing. Uh, coding, uh, coding shit up. Not required, but would be good if you would know front-end coding. Uh, psychology. That, and that's only about the catering results part. If you run an agency, second part of your skills is politics, human relationships. If you're an agency, imagine a, a two-by-two matrix, so two axes. One axis is relationship with the client, and the, uh, the other one is results. So if the results are great, but the relationship is shit, you're going to get fired eventually. If the res uh, uh, res uh, results are shit, but the relationship is good, you get more time. You have more time to get results. If results are shit and relationship is shit, you're fired. Uh, uh, but if, if the results are great and the relationship is great, you can keep that client for years and years. And in fact, that is the only way to keep the client for years and years and years. And predictable income in an agency where it's a high overhead type of business is golden. That's where you want to be. Uh, so your people need to be good at so many things. You can't have introverts in the business. Well, I mean, you can, but if they need to talk to you, on, 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 uh, they should not be talking to humans. Uh, I have had great analysts, uh, but when, when they had to like hold a hand and cultivate the relationship and shake hands, it's like, uh, I'm not saying introverts, some introverts are great, have great people skills. Uh, it's just, they need to like force themselves. For some people it's natural, but also the work needs to be good. So the way I structure it is uh, uh, I assign a team of five to work on a client project. A team of five. So that includes two optimizers, out of whom one is the, the main project manager, main contact, but also does the optimization work. And then there's a designer, there's a developer, and there's usually a, a junior person who does a lot of the important dirty work, uh, but uh, that doesn't you know cost much. We don't need the more expensive people for that. So my two uh, recommendations would be here. like If you're gonna hire somebody young, somebody who hasn't done this. Uh, you need to make sure these people are gonna stick around for a long time because if there's, if you have a, a employee retention issues, they're changing jobs every year, it's too expensive for you. It's too expensive, the results are gonna be shit. Your agency is gonna be, not be able to uh, deliver. Um, so it, it's much better to hire experienced CRO people if you can find them and afford them. Both difficult. Uh, there's a huge demand for uh, for experienced CRO people. I know uh, we're, we're always having a tough time hiring ourselves, and uh, and that's you know and we have name recognition in the industry still having a tough time. So training takes a long time. 
but you can speed things up. You can speed things up by uh, giving formal training to these people, obviously. Uh, so it's not just on the job. On the job is most important, but also there's some sort of a formal training program going on that these people are getting trained at. Uh, very important. Um, they need to need to catch up. Uh, and this goes for everybody. Like you need to find people or one single mentor who've been there, done that, who've done what you're trying to do, uh, who made the mistakes that you're making, who've, who've set up team structures, who've set up products, pricing, who know how things work, who know how clients want to buy. Find those people and ask them, hey, you know, when I first started my agency, I was invent, reinventing the wheel and inventing the wheel all the time. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just, let's, I think that sounds like a reasonable idea. Let's go with that. And then I started to um, go to industry conferences. And then I didn't just go there to just listen to the talks because that's what, you know, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, it's good, but, you know, uh, the, the, the main value in every conference is, is the people who are there. So I identified all the people who are running CRO, successful CRO agencies, and I was like, hey, dude, you know, what are you charging? What are you delivering for that money? How is this thing, how is this, this thing structured? How, how do you do that? Blah, blah, blah. So I was just taking notes and just interviewing one successful agency owner after another um, and, and, and brought that back to my team. Say, like, guys, we're going to change everything everything so you need to find people that really accelerate your learning and if you can find a mentor so mentor somebody who will invest in you somebody who will spend time with you and will answer your questions that's immeasurable i had the luck of having that person in my life i still do still do um and uh, this is this guy craig sullivan uh optimization uh, dude in the uk he is amazing. He's been mentored to many in the industry, uh, many names you know. Um, he's, he's the guy. Um, he, I hired him for my in, internal workshops. I mean, he's not cheap. The guy knows his shit. Of course, for you guys, end of this month, we're, we're, we're starting a CRO agency masterclass, eight one-hour-long classes when this guy is teaching you, A, how to get clients, B, how to get results, all that stuff that you need to know for a really low price and there's a hundred bucks off coupon here on this slide so I've, i you know my my company paid this guy thousands of thousands of pounds to deliver internal workshops you you, you guys can get it for such a low fee uh myself i run a uh, conversion coaching program i have a couple of spots left starts next week no coupon here this is just an eight week program me teaching you conversion stuff and conversion agency stuff uh, if you want in, you, you got to join like today or tomorrow. All the spots are gone. All right. Thank you so much. And let's take questions. Okay. So, uh, all right. Let me scroll back up here and start seeing where the questions is. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. In my new agency, we started whirling with some small local businesses and they don't have traffic to run tests on. Yep, absolutely. That is the thing. A uh, thousand transactions a month is kind of the, the ballpark. Uh, I mean, if you have a, a test that is a high uplift compared to the original, you can you know have less transactions per month, but that should be kind of like, is this a good fit for a testing project or not? Uh, what are the small differences you notice going from working with 10 million a year companies to 100 million a year companies? Uh, more politics um, on the client side. Uh, it, uh, it, there's typically slower to get stuff done. Um, there's, a, there, there's a hierarchy in decision making. If they're really big enterprises, then there's also the pleasure of working with branding and legal teams. So it's like, you create a couple of treatments for the home page, and uh, then before they're set live, even those marketing set cool. Uh, even even uh, even before that, they need to go to legal, who will review every small copy change and assess it from the point of view: Can anybody sue us if we say that? And then they'll a month later they come back and say no, 
or then branding will say, oh, this is not on brand. So like bullshit like that. So you need to start finding legal and branding and getting tests up will take longer. But the beautiful thing about working with this big company is that you're on a monthly retainer. You uh, send out invoices every single month and they pay them. Even if you released one or maybe zero tests. So because the sluggishness is kind of their fault. Of course, you as an agency, it's also your job to help them fix their structure and decision making and facilitate building, uh, building up speed of optimization. It is your job and that's why also people pay you for your expertise in setting this up. But I mean, it's, other, other than that, other, other than the, the bureaucracy, politics and slowness, I prefer big companies any day. Uh, it's more exciting work also, uh, you get better results. Mm. How do you get around the hourly argument when you say charge more per hour than amateurs? That's why they go by hour. Uh, I mean, I just do not speak the hourly language at all. In, any anybody anybody uh, who says that they're charging hourly, I'll tell the client if they say that some other company bills them hourly. I say, well, it is in their interest to not do their fucking job and just slow and put junior people on it. So, I mean, you win the argument against hourly pricing easily. If you want a good book about value-based pricing, uh, look up a book, it's called uh, A Million, Million Dollar Consulting by um, guy Alan Weiss. Uh, buy that book, it's all about value-based pricing and why you should not charge hourly. Um, change my perspective. Brandon is asking, how do you combat agencies that offer performance-based pricing or performance guarantees? Um, sure, it is, it is uh, difficult um, to, to deal with that argument. So you can put performance bonuses uh, on top of yours. But also, you don't want to work with clients who are counting every penny. It's, it's, it's one of the signs of a, uh, of a client from hell if they're very price sensitive. You don't want very price sensitive. You want companies that are value sensitive, who care about the best value that's delivered. And of course, you need to have case studies. You need to have proof. Uh, and companies are irrational in the sense that if this is a healthcare company, they want to see case studies from other healthcare companies, even though the experience with other healthcare companies is, is not really, um, is not really um, needed, because uh, the conversion research process is, is what really matters. How do you deal with clients who don't believe in or understand the need for conversion research as a required step? Well, I mean, they're paying the lottery. Uh, how do you know what to test if you don't do conversion research? The goal of conversion research is to figure out what the problems are, where the problems are, and uh, why these problems are problems to begin with. Because an A-B test, any change you make on the website is a solution to an identified problem. Anybody else, anybody else who is not doing research is just playing the lottery. Ooh, let's try this, let's try that. So, and those ideas, what are the chances that they will produce any results? Very low, unless the website is extremely shitty, like everything is wrong with it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not hard, it's not hard to make a case for conversion research. It's not hard. Mm. Can you go over how you create a retainer fee when sub 10K is more likely to be an initial uh, price point? Um, well, um, you just decide what you can profitably deliver for a fixed price. So retainer fee is that you just charge a flat monthly fee. And for that, you uh, deliver uh, something per month, uh, some, some sort of fixed deliverables. We'll run four tests a month. We will have one or two weekly meetings with your team. We will do, you know, we will code up all these tests. We'll run, you know. So basically, you decide what goes into the package and you put a price on it. And then, oh, obviously, if you're just starting out, you start with a lower price. It's, you know, you need, to, you need to make a profit. So you, you need to be careful about how you price yourself. But then, from there on, you need to st start testing price elasticity. Price elasticity. And price elasticity is... You know, the, the theory of microeconomics 101, if uh, the theory is that if the price goes up, demand goes down. But 
until you hit the point of price elasticity, maybe the price goes up, the demand does not go down. So let's say you win a contract that's $4,000 a month. Next client that you pitch, pitch $5,000 a month. They'll take it, great. Next client, I'll pitch $6,000 a month. Or you can increase in $500 increments or whatever. But always keep testing higher price with your next client until you get resistance. And then stay at that level and see if you can keep selling at that level. See if you can spot any difference between the clients and just keep going. You know, when I first started, we charged $400 a month for A-B testing. $400 a month. And we've been testing price levels. Now 10K a month is our minimum uh, fee. Uh, Dave says, thanks for being a virtual mentor. My pleasure, Dave. Uh, uh, great webinar. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, Johan says Craig has been advising their agency too. Absolutely. Craig is great. Uh, Pep, so you only work with inbound leads, no outbound activities. That's true. And we tried actually setting up uh, an outbound sales uh, mechanism and uh, we, died, we tried two things. First of all, I hired, you know, there are the sales development agencies. So people who will do, uh, based on your criteria, uh, lead scouting for you. They'll build a, a, basically a, a lead pipeline, 10,000, you know, list 10,000 companies that seem like a good fit. We start uh, identifying the right people, emailing them, sending them phone calls, and then uh, do the first sales pitch and then pass the lead to me. We, did, we closed zero clients uh, working three months with a sales development agency. 10,000 companies went through, closed zero. Uh, second thing, we started to do this ourselves, like uh, we, um, uh, you know, people who are joining our email list, we get like 150, 200 emails a day joining our email list. So out of those emails, we identified bigger companies and then emailed bigger companies right away, tried to get them on a phone call. But again, buying conversion optimization service, it's an expensive and complicated product. So you need to have the need and the budget for it. So it's not something, it's not an impulse purchase, it's a considered purchase. So um, cold pitches for expensive products, very difficult. If you have successfully pulled it off, let me know. Uh, I'd like to learn from you. Uh, Nir Roshan says, how many tests you run per month? I don't know. It depends on the clients. Uh, some clients we do four tests a month. Some of the clients we do eight tests a month. Depends. Uh, Yoris, when you've done the research, there's typically also some uh, just do it stuff that doesn't need testing. How do you help clients with that and how do you productize that? So we never touch um, the actual website code of our clients. So then we just, um, if uh, we just tell them, uh, you know, fix this, fix that, change this, change that. Or we can give them a design mock-up. Uh, my designer, uh, you know, in conjunction with my optimizers, will design a treatment that, 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 that they should just fix. I mean, if needed, we can also write the front-end code for it, but then all the implementation will still be up uh, for the client and and the reason is why you don't want to touch the back and code of the client is that if shit goes wrong you they're gonna sue your ass um, and you don't want to be responsible for any uh, broken stuff on the website it would be companies that's massive loss of money massive lawsuits I mean all the company agencies that work with big companies also have to ca carry liability insurance uh, have to be insured for a million bucks or, or uh, more What's the red thing on the wall? Ah, this is a acoustic noise panel. So I have like several in my office here on the walls. Um, oops. Um, so without these uh, panels, my office was echoing a lot. So this is uh, to uh, minimize the echo. Because uh, uh, I do podcasts and shit, so I can't have any echo in this room. Bobby says, what was the one thing that produced the most surprising result when it came to growing our agency? Um, I think increasing the prices. Uh, I was surprised by testing, testing the price and just charging more money over time and how we were able to get away with it. I, like, I think it was the um, Reed Hoffman from LinkedIn uh, that said that if you're not embarrassed by how much money you're charging, you're not charging enough. Uh, that was a surprise for me when I got started. Um, 
Any advice on running great surveys when trying to understand who your customers are, tools and questions? Well, Daniel, I mean, we have lots of great blog posts. So go to conversionexcel.com, put in the search, survey questions, lots of blog posts about that. Um, Yoris says, what are the most common objections you hear from potential clients and how do you handle them? Uh, can you guarantee a result? That's the most common thing. Um, well, uh, the answer is now we, we guarantee 0%, but look at all these case studies that we have. Um, every client is different. So they, yeah, they want to quantify, they want us to, you know, look at the crystal ball and, and predict the outcome. How do you charge for a monthly CRO retainer? And on average, how many tests does your average client run per month? Our standard, the lowest package we have is 10K a month uh, that includes four tests a month, uh, four tests launched. New for new test launched per month. Mm, Fab says, uh, "Do you think it's easier to focus on B two B companies or e commerce?" Uh, both. There's no difference uh, for us. E commerce is a bigger chunk of the business, but also we have also B two B. Do you have any automation tools for optimizing agency workflows, Zapier scripts, and what do you want to optimize? So that it it depends. Uh, we use Trello. Uh, we use Iridian. Uh, for the workflow management, uh, there's effective experiments, um, there's experiment engine, um, yeah. My, uh, my question is, how, what do you do when there isn't a lot of big companies in the market? The bottom of the top uh, 20 biggest companies are under 1 million. Well, uh, I'm from Estonia. My agency people are in Estonia, so nobody knows <laughs> small market challenges like I do. So. Do, why do you restrict yourself geographically to where you are? Uh, our agency people are in Tallinn, Estonia, one million uh, population, one million. Uh, Ninety percent of our clients are U.S. companies. Uh, another seven percent Australian. We have zero Estonian clients. So don't don't focus on your local market. How did you approach your mentors? How did you make it worth it uh, for them to work with you? Well, it's a, it's a two-way uh, street, so you need to give something back. First, lots of engagement in uh, Twitter. That was my thing to get uh, started. Uh, and then, I mean, most people are just great human beings. So uh, I went to events, bought them a beer, just had a chat. And, you know, the great secret to networking is that it's not that you go and, hey, can you help me with this? That's bull I get 100 emails a day, people asking shit from me. Delete, 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 because it's overwhelming. But if people come and they are, they're just cool guys. That's the secret of networking. You go to a conference, and all the speakers and whatever uh, people that you want to, you know, uh, become friends with, just hang out with them. Be a cool guy. Uh, do not ask for anything. Play the long game. And of course, you can hire all these people to deliver workshops. Uh, money increases all the wheels always. Uh, books you'd recommend? No. Um, do you have any experience or thoughts on working with startups that aren't making money but have VC money and want to uh, want to see a road to help grow faster? Well, the, if they don't have revenue yet, um, uh, do they have customers? I mean, you need to have something to measure, and that they need to have ROI there. So. Uh, you can always sell research in a company. It doesn't matter what size they are. You can always sell conversion research. Um, so that, that's something you can always sell, but in order to run tests, they need to have some sort of a uh, volume, uh, traffic transaction volume. So there's no, there's just math, you know, you can't change the way math works. And also like if it's a, let's say that they, they have enough traffic to run one test a month, but they do, they're not making enough revenue, so then getting results is hard. So if you add 1% to the revenue, you're just gonna get fired. So you can try, you can try. Uh, Dave says, what are the salary ranges of optimizers? Are you seeing new disciplines, job types developing in this space? Um, it varies from country to country. Uh, look up on Conversion Excel blog, um, state of the industry report. Google it, we have the salaries in there from last year. Our next report is coming out later this month. Do you ever sell a monthly CRO retainer without the research? Uh, never, because that would be um, ripping people off. Uh, Joshua says, what are some of your favorite testing tools? If, 
if we want to roll our sleeves up and get to work, is there one or two go-to tools you would recommend? Uh, most tools are great. So VWO, Optimizely, Conductrix, Sentient Ascend. The main thing is that, you know, never use the visual editor. Always use the code editor to code up tests. Uh, I like VWO because of uh, their, their use of the bandit, sorry, uh, a Bayesian algorithm. I like Conductrix, what it can do with uh, machine learning based uh, segment targeting. Uh, I like Sentient Descent, which they can do with uh, like multivariate stars. You need to have very high traffic website there. But those, those would be my starting tools. Should we use QR form to send questions? I don't know what's QR. On average, uh, Dimitrios, how long do you work with one client? Is there a point when clients don't need CRO services anymore? No, they, uh, this really depends on the size of the client. So the bigger the client in terms of revenue, online revenue, the longer the engagement. So if they make 10 million a month, 100 million a month, and you increase uh, results 1% per month, they'll keep you on forever. They keep you on until this stuff is profitable, until it's measurably profitable. Uh, with small businesses, the point of diminishing returns will come very fast. So small businesses, then on the like 10 million a year, or maybe slightly under, they're like 7 million a year. Usually it's like three months engagement, maximum six months, because uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hit the point where we've gotten the big wins and uh, the 1% wins that are just not worth it to them anymore. What is the difference in skills between CRO and UX designer? Well, uh, massive, massive differences. Uh, I mean, CRO needs to do, uh, be really savvy about analytics, uh, copywriting, statistics, running tests, um, uh, politics, uh, qualitative research. If it's just a design, designer, you know, I mean, I guess designers, depending, uh, we'll also do user research you know, uh, and, and lots of qualitative stuff, but all the quantitative uh, stuff there and the politics. Uh, Alessandro, uh, thanks for this honest webinar. How do you? How many hours do you work in a day? What was the worst mistake in growing your agency? Um, I work like six, seven hours a day because uh, uh, that's my peak productivity level. Actually, that's my number one productivity tip. Um, is that if you if you know you're gonna not if you know if you work 14 hours a day you have the perception that you have all day long to get shit done um, and of course when I started I, I was let's say hustling a lot more when I was uh, putting in more hours but now I have two kids I have a family uh, I'm aging so it means like I need to invest in my health uh, working out so something's gotta give can't win everything uh, yeah. My worst mistake, I don't know, man. I, I haven't had any catastrophic mistakes, uh, to be honest. Uh, advice for someone who fell into CRO. Well, didn't we all, man? I'm signing up for your courses, read a ton of books, but you really got success by instinct and just, I, I've had really good success by instinct and going with my gut. Well, that's great for you, Alan, but luck will run out, so it's time to get some... Uh, <laughs> some quality process and stuff in it as well. Uh, you you're, uh, don't just hope, uh, uh, yeah. Carly, so how do you start from zero when you have no previous work to show to a client? Uh, land your first clients for, for free. That's it, uh, work for free, and uh, if you don't have the experience, uh, then go work for an agency, offer yourself as an intern, uh, play the long game. Don't play the. Don't be in. A, this is a marathon. Like, are you going to be doing this twenty years from now? If so, it makes sense. I worked for free two years at the start of my career for free, just to get experience. Um, so play the long game. Uh, play, learning is valuable. And, and start start blogging now, start blogging now. People ask Seth Godin, when's the best time to start promoting my book? And Seth Godin said, before you write it. Same for CRL. Uh, Fab says, did you productize support and teaching stuff to clients? Uh, how much do you charge? Yeah, we do internal workshops, uh, which are depending on like uh, the duration of the workshop and if it's custom or, or standard content. 
Uh, I think we're minimum 10K a day uh, type of stuff. And then, of course, now we have CXL Institute. Uh, Kristen says, great training. Thanks. How do you start to calculate ROI so you can create value-based packages? We've done CRO audits before and a few monthly retainers. Not sure how to find the solid numbers for our case studies. So look up um, a, a blog post on, on our blog, uh, how to measure ROI of, of optimization. It goes really in depth with that stuff. It is difficult. It's no easy feat to measure ROI. The best thing is that if you run A-B tests, and A-B tests measure the relative improvement over what was there versus what you've added. So relative improvement, and then you can make an assumption, you know, it's a model, it's, it's, it's a flawed model, but it's better than nothing. You make an assumption that that uplift that you gain will be there six, maybe 12 months from now, and then you add up all those uplifts. So that, that's the best way to go. If, uh, if you can't run tests, I mean, it's, it's, it's gets shot here. Uh, are we getting a recording? Yes. How much traffic do clients need to start conversion tests? Traffic is irrelevant. Measure transactions. 1,000 transactions per month is a uh, starting point. Ballpark. Have you seen agency model that mix inbound PPC plus CRO? Sure. But the thing is, when you're like, we do it all type of stuff. Yeah. So the problem with that is that if I'm, I'm the buyer, and there, I have two agents pitching me. One does it all, and one does just CRO. The question is, who is better at CRO? So the perception of expertise is much higher with the company that just does CRO. And the actual expertise is much better since they do just CRO. So there's a time and place for, you know, we do it all full stack agencies, but focus uh, beats everything. Um, why did you recommend not using Visual Editor again? Because all your tests will break and it's bullshit. Uh, also, with Visual Editor, you can just do tiny cosmetic changes. So you're testing shit that the Visual Editor enables you to test, like some copy and button shit. You're not testing actual solutions to actual problems that you have identified through conversion optimization. And the automatic code, the Visual Editor is right, it just breaks in half the browsers. This massive QA issues. Your tests, uh, they just your tests will fail. Uh, that's it. Don't use visual editors ever. How much is minimum traffic on a website to let you do good tests? I said thousand transactions. Traffic is irrelevant. Where is CRO going? Any insights for the future? Uh, quantitative tools will get better. Insights from quantitative tools will get better. Uh, personalization, automated personalization will get better. Um, well, so, so tools will get easier and better, um, but uh, so that means what, what's left for humans? I mean, invest in uh, just a strategic approach, invest in process, invest in knowing how to work with these new tools that are becoming available, invest in qualitative research. Tools have not yet figured out humans. So knowing humans and understanding your audience is, is our super, superpower. Um, have a great weekend. Uh, greeting from Lutz, you can visit the Tallinn office. Go ahead, man. Uh, have you ever worked with Russian companies? Uh, I don't think so. All right, questions are over. Uh, time, we've already gone 10 minutes over. Thanks so much, guys. Um, as I said, if I were you running an agency, I would look into the CRO Agency Masterclass starting end of this month. Um, my coaching program starts next week. Uh, we'll send you the recording after. Uh, and uh, gracias, Felix. See